Well, uh, why don't we go around and introduce ourselves? I'm I'm Matt. I'm running this game. <laughs> you know, I have a channel called Black Caliber, and hopefully, uh, by the end of this, all your characters will be dead. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, he's kind of like a GM. More and more. Now tell us about yourself and your character, I guess. All right. Well, uh, my name is Steve. Uh, you probably have heard me in uh, the past Y Caliber table topping sessions. I sometimes GM, sometimes play. Uh, at the moment, I am playing, and I'm playing Grucko, the Besilisk soldier, who's a, a master of using four different types of weapons, each one exactly the same, and they're his fists. <laughs> I'm sure they all have a, a subtle difference. He's probably tattooed each one with their specific name for some reason. This is Lefty One. This is Lefty Two. <laughs> uh, but Grucko is a soldier who joined up with the, uh, the Rebellion because he is basically wants to be a hero, and he volunteers for anything that is dangerous and helps the innocent. He's a go. good, simple person. We see Grucko is over here in the ship lounge of the YT-2000 transport, the Extra Life. Uh, enjoying chips at the moment. He's enjoying some chips. The chips are down, and he knows where he stands. <laughs> uh, okay. Who else wants to tell us about them and their characters? I mean, everybody has to. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, I'm Jason, and I'll be portraying Bruce, uh, the most Star Wars of all names. And I'm a new Modian spy, comfortable around technology, but uncomfortable with the Empire. Mm. Mm. I'm on the run for doing a deed I'd rather not speak of. And looking for love. Yes, <laughs> in all the wrong places. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, okay, how about uh, Grimoth? Tell us about you. Uh, hello, I'm Grimoth. Now you all can recognize my voice, and I am playing... Some name I can't pronounce. What do you got for me, Matt? Zancy? It depends. Do you want to go with a Chinese style pronunciation or a European style? It's either Zancy or Shansi. Shansi. Listen, look, I'm I'm already going out of my comfort zone by playing a powerful black woman. Like we have to take a few <laughs> steps with my cultural tolerance here. Anyway, I'm playing a Zancy, who, as it turns out, is a muscular black woman. Too broad, muscular black woman. Uh, she, uh, according to my helpful blurb here for my pre-gen character, she uh, was a former stormtrooper commander. Uh, then she has decided to uh, defect and attempt to overthrow the vamp, uh, the vampire. Yes, the vampire <laughs> and the empire. Uh, after witnessing her third civilian massacre, she's tough, no nonsense. Uh, but I like to think that uh, she's a. Uh, She's got, like, a whole lot of, like, nasty, like, leftovers from being a part of the Empire's indoctrination program. She's, despite having her three presents, she's probably not that good at actually talking to people. She's too busy being like, oh, you're just a civilian. What do you actually know about doing anything of marriage? Look, I massacred people just like you with my Stormtrooper crew, <laughs> you know? <laughs> And she's trying to get used to chips, but it's really hard for her. It's a slow adjustment. Mm, yeah. Understandable. Thank you, Grimoth. Um, okay, David, uh, our donor player, why don't you tell us about the character you're playing? Uh oh, this is going to be confusing for me. <laughs> All right, well, I am David, and I'm portraying Tardak. He is a Nikto engineer. And he likes to uh, figure out pretty much how everything works. Uh, he usually will take apart some contraption that he's seen for the first time just to figure out what everything does. He especially loves alliance technology. And he's very sympathetic, thanks to his family, to uh, the Republic. And he's against the Empire pretty much because they built their ships for speed and firepower and not really to protect their pilots as much. He's a, so, yep. an, an engineer with a conscience when it yep. comes to shipbuilding. Okay. Thank you, David. Shipbuilding? We build ships? <laughs> ah. 
The plot unravels. <laughs> the chip builders. <laughs> that, 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 that's just good game design, Matt. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, yes. I knew in advance how this was going to turn out. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. <laughs> My goodness. All right, uh, Dave, tell us about you. I'm a streamer today. I do the YouTubes, and I'm playing Adson Pencron, who's a Karelian Human pilot. Uh, came from real, real uh, source of first world problems growing up. Just too much trouble in the middle class, and uh, became an Imperial pilot because wanted to, you know, have some adventure, see a better, you know, better life for myself. And uh, then switch sides because this empire pretty crazy. Yeah, I uh, know they they talk about crisps all the time. It's madness. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got some tap dancing going on over there, Jason? Uh, so I know my dog is just really excited to hear all about this. Oh, okay. Oh, you're, you're, right. you're, you're playing. You're playing Age of Rebellion versus <laughs> Empire versus Force of Destiny. I want to know. I want to know. Well, as soon as he heard crisps, he was all in. <laughs> oh. oh, you're done. You're yeah, no, dog's go. too dark side. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Um, and we were supposed to have uh, Damon joining us, but he's not here right now. So until he gets here, we've got our we are special... stronger without him. <laughs> we've got our special uh, guest who's agreed to step in until he arrives. So thank you so much to Farrell, uh, who I know everyone in the audience has really missed hearing from. So, Farrell, do you want to tell us about your character that you're. Temping. Hello, everybody. Oh no! Please don't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the scary part is I can actually do that with my voice instead of there's like no synthesizer involved there. <laughs> uh, hi, I am Farrell. I used to play with you guys, or most of these guys, some of these guys, a couple of these guys. Um, I am pinch hitting for Warana the Duros Ace who lost her entire family and almost everyone she knew and everyone in her city to a carpet bombing over the first war of the crisps Ooh, and so... now she's become <laughs> the gal she's trying to become the galaxy's top pilot so she can truly just get everybody's ass beaten and and just She's reckless and abrasive, and, and she wants everyone to know the difference between crisps and chips. So, uh, first world problems, right? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Maybe? Alright, and um, nobody wanted to play the last two characters, but I'll tell you about them anyway. We've got over here in the toilet, this is Bitterani. Bitterani uh, used to be a judge who worked in the Imperial Courts, but he became disillusioned with that life, and the uh, rampant corruption there, so he's defected. He now works as an ambassador for the Alliance to the Restore of the Republic, uh, and he's a, he's a diplomat, so he's good at being nice, uh, leadership, and um, being a judge. What about Chin? How could no one want to play as him? Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> We're lucky to have there him. There was a fat Twilik on this crew, and you have me play the pilot? He's not fat! <laughs> <laughs> He's cheerful. <laughs> uh, and speaking of cheerful, the last member of the crew is Zastadia. Zastadia is a Miri Allen um, medic. She's a Republic trooper, and uh, not a Republic trooper, a rebel trooper, and she's a medic. She's a uh, very cheerful, happy-go-lucky type. Uh, she just wants everyone to be comfortable. Unfortunately, uh, she believes that in order for people to be comfortable, they need to follow the latest health fad. So her Ooh. current push is Space Zumba. Uh, she's been trying to get you guys to do Space Zumba in the in the cargo bay every morning at the same time. What is Space Zumba? <laughs> it's, it's like it's Zumba in zero G. Yeah, yeah it's just zero G easier. Zumba. Look, if if it involves me getting arrow tattoos on my chin pointing to my mouth like she has, I'm gonna have to take a pass. <laughs> <laughs> She wants to make well, sure else? that people know that she's the one talking. You, know, you have to look over there. So much where judgment. The go. Yeah, it, that's it, where it, the food it, goes. It's a stormtrooper in me. That's what it is, right? It's just like completely intolerant of like other people's tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, are we all prepared? Are you ready to get started? I'm ready. 
Okay, so you are on your way back from a successful mission to uh, the Outer Rim, where you were escorting the Ambassador Bitterani, you call you all just call him Bit, who uh, was on a mission to a planet out there on the Outer Rim. We'll say the planet was Skulfodar, and uh, the Skulfodarans were uh, under Imperial control nominally, but there weren't any actual stormtroopers or Imperial presence there. They were just kind of like they had just immediately surrendered when they saw a, a, an Imperial Star Destroyer show up one day. And then they left. So they've just been kind of self-ruling as Imperial uh, and making the tributes and all that. So you went there and convinced them not to do that and to help out the Alliance instead. So they, you added their uh, brave souls to the uh, to the ranks of the Alliance to the Restore the Republic. So you're on your way back, and uh, things have been very successful for you. You know, you were just uh, happily watching the opening crawl with that super copyrighted music that's now copyrighted by both Sony and Disney. Woo! <laughs> so the two most sue-happy companies in the world, uh, other Enjoy than Apple, I guess. <laughs> And uh, little do you know, you're about to become a part of the war, a much more vital cog than you have so far been. All right, Shit. so <laughs> you are traveling through hyperspace, um, and suddenly you feel your ship give a sudden jolt. You hear, and the hyperdrive goes. I told you to stop doing space so far the ship. <laughs> <laughs> You're not sure what's just happened, but you know it can't be good. You better check the Navicomp fast. You've got a bad oh, feeling, a bad about, feeling this. about this. <laughs> Checking the shit out of that thing. Uh, of note, Adson is not with you. You don't know Adson yet. Uh, Adson's not there yet. You heard it through the force. <laughs> just so that you're aware. All right. I slug around my hollow net terminals, like cursing at the pilot, trying to avoid being too racist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, I'm, I'm going to head down to the engine. Okay. You're going to head down yeah. to the engine. And I gonna... broke my ship. Tardak heads there as well. Okay. Grucko is double fisting bags of chips and he eats them very slowly. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Right, um, we're on a. You're you're in the cockpit there, right? You've been. We're on a. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you notice the star lines are no longer streaking by. You've dropped into real space. Uh, as a pilot, uh, you know this should never happen because there are no planets nearby, and you yeah. very carefully plotted your your astrogation check before you left that planet whose name I've already forgotten. Um. <laughs> As you turn your head, you see a large, gray, wedge-shaped ship in the distance in combat with a battle-scarred frigate. This can't be good. What do you do? Uh, first, the jaw hangs, then the, oh shit, then, Imperials! <laughs> okay. Uh, everybody, once you hear that through the ship, you're going to need to make your first check of the game. <gasps> You're all going to make a hard discipline check. That's three purple die. So go in and add three purple die to your dice uh, pool, and then oh, scroll uh, down to your skill section and click on discipline. Snap. We've uh, forgotten an essential part of this game. Yeah, we'll oh. get we'll get to that. Don't worry. Okay. I forgot too, but we'll get to it after this. All right. Oh. Discipline, not deception. Yeah, no, no, I got there. <laughs> deception. Okay. We'll just combine um, the two skills together and make it so mm, that our <laughs> lies are mm. very strong. Hmm. It looks like uh, everyone but Zancy has failed your discipline check. Okay, you I'm are having like a I'm having like a massacre <laughs> flashback. I think that's what this means. <laughs> kind of and round group. one, I pilot us into the side of the star destroyer. All right, um, you are all afraid. You're all suffering from the fear effect, except for Zancy. 
Oh, I'm no. also actively sweating. Yeah, for sure. That means you've got a setback on all of your actions until you're no longer afraid. Um, so you see two ships, and if you zoom out a bit, you can see uh, the extent of the battlefield up there. Now, all you've seen so far is that the ship is gray and wedge-shaped, and the other ship is some kind of frigate. So you don't know what these ships are, or what kind of ships they are, or who they're working with. Well, you, you might know who the one on the right is working with. Uh, so you may need to try and figure that out with some kind of, you know, knowledge education check or a mechanics, or no, sorry, just a knowledge education check. Um, well, so anyone who has knowledge education or wants to give it a try, that's an average roll, two purples. Zanzi comes bursting into the cockpit, you know, like the profanity stopping as like, like it like stares out like, oh, I mean, you know, she starts her. She's probably been on ships like that before. Maybe. Oh, for sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. You got you got a blue die to any check you want to make to try and identify that ship. You could do warfare too, even. Oh my goodness! The what is my warfare? It's okay. Oh my goodness! Incredible. What's the difficulty? Two. Two purples. Average. Two. Exciting. So we'll go ahead and use this highly convoluted roller and get a success. That's the opposite of a success. Um. No. <laughs> well, you, you know, it, it's an advantage. You have so... an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what you guys are used to rolling whenever you do this stuff? Like yep. failures with advantages? Yeah, but... so uh, what do you want to do with that advantage? I think I'm going to use it to just fucking not reflect so much on the massacre that just happened in my head. <laughs> the three threads I rolled earlier. Just yeah. gonna let it go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Okay. That's fair. Can I see the ships? Uh, you can if you go to look at them or if uh, you get someone to put it through to the screen back there. Sure. Can you push through uh, Push through the vis vision of the ships to the screen? Push anyone? the button. Thank you. Um, can I know? I recognize we're in space, but yeah. I like to think we're on the intergalactic highway, and therefore I want to use my street smarts or my streetwise <laughs> to, to recognize um, to see if I recognize because I've been around this this galactic block before. All right, if you want to use a streetwise check for this, you can, but it's going to be daunting. That's four purples. Four purples. Okay, and then the fear. What does the fear do again? One setback. One black die. One black die. Okay, here we go. Wow. Let's see how streetwise I can I believe be. In you. I don't believe in you. <laughs> oh, no. I just hope saw them hauling one of those through like the avenue the other day. <laughs> <laughs> you roll. Uh, you roll three <laughs> threats. So you're you're feeling even more nervous about this because you can't recognize it. As, as you're looking at it, you're thinking, I mean. It's it's got to be like a, at least a victory class star destroyer, right? Those are the scariest ones that I know of. Um, <laughs> Their wedge is twenty percent bigger than the other wedges. Yeah, I, I feel like I've only discerned that that's not a moon, and that's Leading as far as I yeah. <laughs> not it's definitely awesome. not a that's planet. That's not a moon. It's a space object. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, space polygon. It's matter. If anyone else wants to make a try to identify either of these vessels, you can uh, tell me how what skill you want to use and why you're going to use that skill. But everything is matter. Unless it's energy. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd be able to Shut up, nerd! We're in a busy <laughs> right now. I'd be able to use mechanics. Sure, yeah. I'll, I'll call that an average mechanics check. Okay, and since Tardak is pretty much in the same area as Bruce, he should have the image as well, right? Yeah, you're, you're looking over Bruce's shoulder. Bruce is shorter than you, so... Okay, and three... Uh oh, four difficulty yeah. die? That's two for a mechanics check. Okay, and no setbacks thanks to mechanics. You have... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, because you've got a special skill for that. Yep. Will it matter? Damn. Okay, all right, that's a good roll. Uh, you know so, exactly where that two-meter-wide uh, exhaustion port is. <laughs> <laughs> so you see those ships, you know exactly what they are, but um, knowing what they are is actually making you more scared because as a mechanic, you know this, uh, that you're trapped because that is an immobilizer 
418 interdictor cruiser. Um, with that many successes, let's see. You know that each carries, um, sorry, the other ship is a Nebulon B escort frigate. Uh, the Rebellion uses a lot of these, but the Empire uses some too. This one, uh, you know, is actually a medical variant. This is a medical Nebulon B escort frigate. So this is a hospital ship that's under attack by an Imperial Interdictor cruiser. The cruiser is about twice the size of the likely Rebel Nebulon B. Um, they have a similar complement of fighters. The Interdictor has a few more fighters than the Nebulon B can carry, especially the medical variant. So this could be a stalemate, but there do appear to be more fighters out there on the, uh, on the old Imperial side. You can see, uh, coming from the Nebulon uh, B escort frigate, you can see a group of Y wings going out to fight, <laughs> going out to fight those <laughs> Tie fighters, and there's a couple Tie interceptors in there too. Uh, but because you know it's an interdictor cruiser, you know that that means you can't leave here through hyperdrive. They've got gravity wells that uh, mimic the mass shadow of a planet and pull you right out of hyperspace. And prevent you from getting back in. Oh, almost as if it's a logical connection to why we were kicked out. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, relay that information. Logical thought. Meanwhile, in the lounge, Groco has uh, lost both bags of chips. They have spread oh, no. the entire <laughs> lounge. It is bastards. And uh, he's now. He's now what? Oh man. So angry, <laughs> the <laughs> microphone just cut out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, one of you may want to check on the hyperdrive, see how it's doing. Um, you can either use mechanics or computers, depending on on what you're better with. But either way, it's an average check. That's two purple die. I can check it out. What? Completely cancelled out. Good, yep. good roll. Good roll. That's, a, that's a, com <laughs> a complete yeah. wash. You can't find anything wrong with the hyperdrive. Uh, as far as you can tell, it should be working, but you know, because of the mass shadows, that it won't be. Um, okay, so you get a hail. Attention, new vessel. This is the Alliance Medical Frigate Miracle Network. Uh, we're carrying <laughs> victims. <laughs> From the Imperial attack on the Talsi colonies. Uh, we've managed to open a hole in the Interdictor's defenses with our bombers, but they're being torn up by those ties. Please, please help. You know, you've got options here. I mean, this isn't looking great for the escort frigate. You could always just, you know, see if the Imperials have anything to offer. Groko's literally like bouncing up and down behind the bridge, just going punch, 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 punch. <laughs> Zanzi like, like swivels her head to like stare back at like the the chip like stained Greco. <laughs> Cheeto does wanna, all four hands. You you want to punch the interdictor? She like gestures out the window. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we can stick him on a torpedo tube and boom, right <laughs> launch the basilisk. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, anyone? Anyone going to respond to that? To that hail? That broadcast there? I guess. I guess <laughs> since Zancy is the only one who isn't actually afraid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who's the like, captain of the ship? By the way. I don't know. Who is the who, who is the head of us, man? Well, uh, War, Warana's the pilot, so technically Warana's the captain when you're on her ship. But That's right. uh, I knew I knew that Bit was the diplomat. We were God. here like doing a mission for him, so I didn't know whether he had any rebel authority. The rebel uh, of authority has been thrust upon me. Both Bit and Zancy are technically the leaders of this group. Zancy's in charge of military operations. Bit's in charge of civilian diplomacy shit. So, right. Well, this oh. is a military operation, even if I am driving. Great, great. I love that relinquishing of power. I love power. <laughs> <laughs> Zancy, 
<laughs> Zancy in that case, like she like like stalks up to the fucking like calm thing. She like opens it and respond and just says, Fine. <laughs> like she's not gonna talk to the pretentiously named medical vessel. She doesn't have time for that nonsense. No nonsense. It's in the character blurb. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Nancy cuts her eyes towards Warana and does like a little because she knows she doesn't know like space uh, like superiority or authority just like does like this like official like imperious looking like hand gesture towards the the interdictor well (laughs) all right let me just fly my ship right up to it let's uh let's start off by rolling some destiny points which we're supposed to do at the start of a session but i totally forgot (laughs) So if you go into your dice pool, you can see the destiny points. Uh, it says destiny pool there. So why? Hmm. Okay, how does that work again? I'm not sure how it works in the GM side. Well, in the player side, how does it work for you? Uh, there's a button called roll destiny. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't have that button, so use that button. We've oh, all been no told destiny to points to find. Reset the destiny pool. I already did that. All right, hold on. We do need to also sync pool with the GM before we do that, but I got the oh, same message. Sync with the GM. Okay, we got to so sync with the GM, then hit roll destiny. Okay. It's still not working. No. Okay, no. forget that mechanic then. Go into your dice pool. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. You see that die in the middle, the white one? Yep. Roll one of those Ooh. each. I got one light side. I'm bringing the dark side. Okay. I'm just going to write this down, old school style. Oh, man. Effort. Dangerous. <laughs> we are kicking it back to the old days. Yeah, I rolled a lot of dark side there. Yeah, you did. Mm. It's going to be a good day. You see, the force is strong, just in the other direction. <laughs> so much All pain. Right. So... <laughs> Who is on board that interdictor? <laughs> Parker did spill his chips. All right, so Greco... <laughs> that took the force out of alignment. <laughs> did I just inadvertently roll five threats and a dark side? It looks that way, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm particularly uh, terrified of my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Worst moment of your life. Yes. <laughs> what have I done? How do I escape the interdictor? You can say you're, you you can say you're Bruce Almighty. Uh... Have a good night, everybody. I'll see you later. <laughs> the charity broadcast, everyone. <laughs> so <much> <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least I find my puns funny. Remember, these puns are for the children. All right, let's help them recover from their traumatic, you know, <laughs> conditions. That's not so bad. So you've got uh, we've got four dark side points and three light side points in the destiny pool. All right, so. Um, with that, uh, a group of the TIE fighters breaks off and starts flying towards you, and, um, you are suddenly put in contact with the leader of the Y-Wing flight group, a man named Adson. So, hi, Adson. Because I can't even afford an X-Wing for the- hey, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Zancy, like, no squad <laughs> leader. <laughs> you didn't want to have to fucking like talk again. Well, I, I'm just in contact with them. Yeah, you've you've got a channel open between the two of you. You got comms. All right, this is Adson Pencrom, leader of the Y Wing Force. What's your status? Terrified. <laughs> Zancy, like elbows her. <laughs> well, you got a squad of Tie Fighters heading at you, so I think your only option is to help us out, or we all die. Do you have any weapons? <laughs> yes, you do have weapons on your ship. <laughs> I, I'm, I, wear, I believe my character would be aware of those weapons. I want to go to man one of the guns. I don't want to have anything, anything to do with the Empire. All right. Now, uh, if any of you has a leadership uh, as a skill, uh, as a hint, you can do a leadership check to try and like slap people out of it, get them to snap out of their fear. I, you know, I, I suppose. 
God, man, it's hard being a leader. <laughs> yeah, well, so... I, I, I already executed what part of the strategy was, is I elbowed, like, the pilot, like, almost knocking her out of her chair, like, no, that's not how you talk to people! You're I didn't say that! <laughs> no, you did. What if you did? <laughs> okay, okay, I did then. It yes. was me. We'll call that a, a hard leadership check. That's three purple die. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, Zan Zan Zancy's amazing leadership skills as her tough note nonsense, former commander of stormtroopers, it's a don't be afraid of that interdictor. Be afraid of me and what I will do to you if you don't stand up to that interdictor. <laughs> that that, that oh, over there is not I your am problem. the danger. I will set the punch master on you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want the punch master. <laughs> I, I'm gonna give you a boost die for that <laughs> on your leadership check. Right. Let me go ahead and pull open the amazing roller. Let's see here. Three purple. I'm um, inspired. You better be. Okay. It's amazing. So, the good news is that it was a failure, and I also forgot to take off the point, but the the great news is that I got a triumph in failure. Yeah. <laughs> More of a case for all. You, you still got the, the mechanical end of the triumph available to you there, so you can think about what you want to do with that. Um, do you have a... you guys know how triumphs work in this system? No. No. Okay. Uh, let me. I, I dropped a link, uh, a quick guide link for you in the tabletop channel there. So if you want to open yes. that up, uh, I can let walk through here. triumphs there with you. Uh, basically, a, uh, a triumph it normally counts as a success, but the the success part of it has been canceled out by that extra failure there. But the mechanical end of a triumph uh, means that you still get the triumph effects even though you don't succeed at that particular check. The triumph suggestions for leadership don't think, don't really apply, because uh, the book suggestions include the player may choose to have, you know, a target NPC or whatever become a recurring character who decides to faithfully follow the acting character. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I am going to have a sudden change of personality at some point and totally accept everything. <laughs> Good. I don't know why. Stage one of brainwashing complete. That's my trial. My work here is done. And then David shows up. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> All right. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's not like that. I'm still afraid of the interdictor, but also... Um... Okay, so what I'm going to suggest here... Oh, we haven't lost connection, have we? No. Uh, no, okay. no, I can hear you. Nope. Uh, what I'm going to suggest is that we use that triumph and you can uh, you can upgrade the next character's check, which is better than a boost die. It lets them actually upgrade it, their skill. Uh, is the leadership only pointed at one uh, character, or can I give a rousing speech to all? Uh, if you want to give it a try, anyone's... Anyone's welcome to try it. Okay. Um, I uh, I take a stand in the center of the room and I say, for too long have we let the Empire push us around, but not today. For too long have they been pushing their crisp agenda on us chip-loving folk, but not today. For all things crunchy and potato-based, we will be victorious. All right, so uh, you want to upgrade that leadership check then? Sure. Uh, that means uh, it's still three difficulty. You're going to upgrade okay. the check, and uh, you can have a boost die for that as well because, you know, everybody loves chips around here apparently. Is that the yellow <laughs> one? Uh, so in your dice pool, the there should be... The boost die is the blue one. Yeah, oh, in your dice pool, you should have an upgrade option, and you just click on that once to upgrade it. Oh, there we go. Perfect. And leadership. Here we go. How effective was this speech? Uh, good answer, good answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, not particularly. As, as you're talking no. about how uh, potato-based products are important to this group, everyone's just kind of looking at each other like, what, what's a potato? You know what a potato is? <laughs> <laughs> what's he talking about? Is, does he mean are they Jura potatoes in Star Wars? 
Uh, yeah, they're Dura tubers. Dura tubers. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> yeah. So, unfortunately, you've you just added some confusion. Anyway, let's roll oh. initiative. <laughs> the line must be drawn here. Is there an initiative tracker in this API? Uh, yes, there is. If you go to the combat tab on your character sheet, there is actually a heading called initiative. And uh, what you want to do is just roll cool if we're prepared, which I guess we are, or vigilance if we're not prepared, which, well. Did we, we ever prepared combat? Well, they're not exactly firing on us, so we have a moment to collect ourselves, I guess. Uh, vigilance is mostly used for like straight up ambushes if you if they just like jump in and suddenly start firing at you. Yeah. Get her. That's but it's the GM's plan. call. I'd say you can use either one for this. Just use whatever your best is. I think I think you need it. Sorry, where's the initiative? Uh, if you go to the combat tab on your character sheet. Yeah, so it's like below like first heading. It's below like destiny pool in your stat. It's like yeah, character info skills, combat. Or... Okay. Why is my kit? Is there any setback to initiative? No, it's, no, uh, no initiative you, is you just... You don't roll any difficulty, just a yeah, flat roll. Just a okay. flat roll. My chat is telling me that a dice roll did not upgrade. And that it's a big deal. Oh my. Wasted on the initiative. Yeah, it looks like the, uh, where are we? Looks like Bruce's leadership check did not get upgraded properly. Oh. And also you didn't add your boost die. Oh, geez. How did, oh, I forgot to click out of the field. Yeah. <laughs> so the upgrade should have turned one of those greens to yellow and there should be a boost die added. So By if the way, you want to get that force die. You, you can try that again if you want with the correct okay. roll. So three purple, one blue, one yep. yellow? One upgrade rather than yellow. One upgrade. Oh, okay, yeah, one so, upgrade. Yeah. Okay. I remember uh, there being a I remember there being a initiative tracker that I could use as the GM. Yeah, there's buttons on the top left of the screen. Uh the one of them near the bottom, you click and it opens up a window. Alright, there's my new roll. Still with the force okay. die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. for extra flavor. It's all right, it's all right. There we go. If you want to wipe the whole dice pool, the uh, button that looks like two arrows pointing around oh, each other there it is. Yeah. clears the whole field. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna roll some, uh, roll some stuff for my characters. By the way, it looks like that leadership was actually a success. It does. We were we were sufficiently roused thanks to get Dave's chat about <laughs> the, the chips crisp struggle. What's awesome is due to stream lag, they were really freaking out for an extended period. <laughs> like, damn, <laughs> tell them about it. I did. All right, so that's three successes. So three people of Bruce's choice are no longer suffering from the fear effect. Uh, can I have aroused myself out of fear? Why not? Okay. Yeah, I, your own I, hype man. <laughs> I'm taken aback by my... I'm impressed by myself. But uh, who else was suffering under fear? Okay. Everyone except Zancy. Okay. Um, Tardak Tarda, and Grucko. Tardak can probably be fine uh, with the fear. At least... Grucko will be fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Okay, Why does that say... <laughs> oh. Tag the pilot. Oh, definitely. Definitely the pilot. <laughs> okay, well that 2-0 is actually the TIE pilot's. Uh, I don't know why it came under PC. All of them are whatever. Because, like, I guess whenever you had the combat tab open, that you can select what kind of initial slot it is. PC yeah, there's a PC or an NPC. Right. So there's my initiative roll without all of my uh, dice pool. Okay, there's one of them, uh, and that two zero we're gonna say is a P. I'm gonna get rid of that, and there we go, and then roll another one for the. TIE Interceptor Pilots. Oh, good. Okay. Nice. I got a 4 -1. We have so many PC slots. I think <laughs> I think we've overruled somewhere along the way here, guys. 
It's okay. No, we'll take extra PC slots and just keep taking turns. We have eight PC slots. <laughs> this is too many PC slots. It should be six. I'm going to take out the bottom two here. Good work, Dave. Okay. Or we could just go twice. So, <laughs> you are now in space combat. I uh, hope you have the space combat reference open. Mm -hmm. uh, the starship combat guide. I put two of them in the drop box for you. Now, basically, in Starship Combat, everyone on the ship acts separately, but the ship can only do so many things. Uh, so the pilot has actions that only the pilot can do, like pilot-only actions and pilot-only maneuvers. So uh, Adson, for example, is piloting his own his own ship. Adson's in the Y-wing there. Uh, you can probably click over to your Y-wing or to your vehicle sheet in your character sheet, and you've got the weapons and stuff in there. Same deal for Warana. You can click over to the vehicle sheet in your character sheet and see the information for the YT-2000 there. So when you're on the ship, you get, as usual, a maneuver and an action. You can use the maneuver to move to a different part of the ship um, or to do any maneuver that you would normally do in combat. And ship-based actions, there is stuff for everyone to do. Even if you're not a pilot or a gunner, everyone has stuff they can do on the ship. Uh, with that said, some of you are probably going to want to go and man the guns. There are two guns. Um, and if you're a mechanic, you can do ship repairs. If you're very strong, you can also do ship repairs. Mechanics can charge the shield and stuff like that. And uh, if you've got computers and you're close enough, you can hack into enemy ships and stuff like that. So all those actions you can take are in the references that I put there for you. Okay. Excellent. And I will be letting uh, you know how difficulties and attacks and all that works when it comes up. Yep. I'll let you know ahead of time that despite Groko being fabulous with his fists, he is not great with guns. So you, someone else might want to get on the guns. I've, uh, I'm not that great either because my agility is only two, but I do have a proficiency die in gunner, ink. Eh? I have one agility. <laughs> but you could just punch the triggers a lot. <laughs> shoot, only, shoot, punch, 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 punch If only I could punch lasers at people That'd be great Then we'd be playing an entirely different game <laughs> <laughs> Okay there he So I'll, I'll man a gun We've determined initiative um, How initiative slots work in this game Is if it's a PC slot Any player character can go But you can only go once per uh, per round There's no set order so any player character can go in that first slot. Any other player character can go in that second slot and so on. Uh, same deal for NPC slots. Although I'm going to say that this first slot is for the interceptors because they're faster. And the second slot at the bottom is for TIE fighters because they're garbage. What, nice. what range are we currently at? You are currently at long range, but uh, you are moving at speed one. Okay. Uh... I would suggest we let the pilot go first so we can get close to do stuff. Good call. Sounds super good at piloting. Yeah, go for it. Just to clarify, the uh, indicators of all the ships are like literal counts, so there's exactly two interceptors and eight fighters? Yes. Okay. And five Y-wings. We'll only need... Actually, we could use two dozen. <laughs> Just keep throwing them at the, in uh, the, uh, you know, interceptor. That's not the word I want. The other, the big one. The interdictor. <laughs> interdictor. LR. Yes. 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 Our, all right, pilot. Speed us away. Carry us forsooth. <laughs> speed us away or carry us forsooth. Yes. One or the other. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I'll make a, a brief suggestion that the best opening action for any pilot is always going to be punch, punch it. it. Punch it. Exactly. Uh, because how ship combat works is that uh, difficulty is determined by how fast your ship is going compared to their ships and also the difference in size between your ship and their ships. 
So those ships are all faster and smaller than you, but uh, if you're going at your max speed, then you can, at the least, uh, minimize how difficult it's going to be for the gunners. Then I'm going to have to pull a sweet banking move and just go straight for those ships. All right. You're going to punch it? Punch it. Okay. So <laughs> when you punch it... I'm going to be the only one that buckles up first, though. <laughs> <laughs> So your ship goes uh, immediately to its maximum speed, which I believe is three. Let me see here. Speed max three. Okay. So you're now going speed three. Keep track of that, please. That's important. Um, and good. So you take two strain to the ship. The ship takes two strain. system strain to the ship yeah so it should have 12 strain remaining before it hits the threshold yep okay um so you've still got that's your that's your maneuver to punch it so you still have an action um but you'll probably just need that action to move towards them <laughs> because they are yeah. far away from you Okay. I think that's right. All right. So uh, when you're going at speed three, that is going to move you up to. Do, 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 do. Well, it's going to move you one towards medium. So you're you're still you're still at long range. Actually, you know we're we're going to say you started at medium. So you've taken one maneuver. You're still. Um, you're now gone to short range. You're at short range to these fighters. So let me just move that up there. We'll call that short range. This is all it's all cinematic narrative style, so there's no exact measurements here. Okay. So our ship just like bolts through space and streaks towards the enemy. Okay, we so you're now it. you're now at short range, and that brings us to our second PC slot. Who wants to go? Does get Dave need to do stuff with his Y wings? Absolutely. I kind of want to wait and see what you guys do, because so here's my theory: the interceptors are closer to you, uh -huh. and they will act first. So I want the Y wing squadron to respond to that. Oh. Also, um. Can like the Y Wing Squad take a torpedo barrage and target the gravity well projectors? Is that a thing we can do? Uh, when you're close enough to the ship, you can try. That's what you're trying to do right now. You are trying to get yeah. to that ship. Because I presume destroying it is impractical. We're just trying to escape. Well, you are you are a squad of bombers, and you do have a bunch of torpedoes. Okay. So you you could blow up that interdictor if you all or most got there through this screen of fighters. We will not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is but it, Star Wars. It, it is possible. His confidence is just in not doing this thing is great. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I suppose then for keeping this moving, I can take the second PC slot uh, and run to one of our spiffy, awesome, cool guns. What guns do we have on this? You have a pair of double medium laser cannons on uh, both ventral Six. and dorsal turrets. Okay. In so, universe, a YT-2000 is a pretty slick ship, just so you know. Like, this, this, is... this is a really good ship you're on. Okay. I they're totally tough. feel confident. They're like, they're like the Millennium Falcon, but tough and fast and good, and they don't fall apart. They're well, much newer they're than new. the Falcon. <laughs> I, I love all those things. I'll, uh, I'll glide on to, we'll say, the dorsal twin medium laser cannon, and if I can, if I can swivel it, and if I can, my character will quietly bitch about how she's made to fight in, you know, on ground instead of in the space land. But, okay. Uh, I'm going to assign your, uh, which one did you say, ventral or dorsal? Uh, dorsal. Okay. I'm going to assign you to that so that you can actually use that gun when you're in range. I'm just not a huge fan of the canopy sticking out in front of the ship. 
So what a view, uh, though. Okay, what we have to get view. into uh, close range before we can use that, and we're currently in short. Yeah. So if anyone, Sorry. if there is a co-pilot, someone else who's decent at piloting, um, that person could go up into the cockpit and take a second ship maneuver which will cause some strain on the ship, but you can use that to get into close range with the fighters. I'm decent at piloting. I'll come up and co-pilot. Okay. All right, so Bruce, uh, you take your maneuver to run up to the front of the ship. Yep. And then you're going to uh, take an action to maneuver the ship into close range with the interceptors. Yes. All right, tell us what that looks like. Um, well, I make my, I'm, I'm booking it from, uh, the, uh, hyperdrive where I was before. And I'm, I'm running through the hallways very intensely. Uh, music is swelling. I climb up the ladder and I push Grucko and Zancy out of my way in order to take, uh, my seat. I, of course, safety first, buckle myself in and then grab the, uh, I don't know, handles and then just punch it forward. Yeah, yes, the ship handles, of course. Yes. The ship handles. Yes. Okay. The and uh, the extra life soars. Uh, it takes two more strain, system strain. Uh, so if one of you wants to add that onto the ship. Our, our, um, is our vehicle sheet um, linked? Or it's, should one person be keeping track of that? Uh, Warana should okay. be keeping track of it because it's her ship. Okay. Well... It's the ship that she flies for the rebellion. Yes, we'll wheels. say that. I, I won the pink slip in a space drag race. <laughs> <laughs> you want a race for space pinks? I, I I live my life a quarter light year at a time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so that brings us to the tie interceptors' turn, uh, and they are going to. Uh, now that you've obligingly come right up to them, they're going to shoot at you with their guns. I'm going to totally fail roll right through them. Uh, they're not going max speed at the moment. They're only going speed four because they're dogfighting with the Y-Wings. Um, and that means that it's not going to be quite as easy for them to hit you, but they are smaller than you. So it's, uh, you know, there's that advantage going on. Okay, so... One of them, you know what, for fun, one of them's going to take a maneuver to go up to speed five. Let me just note that down because I don't have anywhere to put that in the system, which is not designed to do very well with space combat. Just like us. <laughs> so, if the, if the extra life blows up, does the, do we follow its namesake? Do we get an extra life? <laughs> uh, I would imagine so, seeing as we don't want you this, all to lose. This is the extra life. <laughs> yeah. oh. On our last mission, the life blew up. This was the spare ship. In this <laughs> yeah, you guys actually started with a cruiser. <laughs> if you bit the Twilik, his chin wasn't that big before. <laughs> oh. All right, so let's see here. Uh, they are going one faster than you, so I believe that gives them one boost die. And they're one size smaller than you. Or no, they're going two faster than you, so that's two boost die. Good, good. And they're one smaller than you, which I think is another boost. Let me double check on that. They're silhouette smaller? Yeah, they're one size smaller than you. They're three, you're four. She's got a big ass. Don't take it personally. I think you're a 10. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Nice. Uh, we just awesome. got sued. <laughs> Possibly. I just downloaded a free app for the phone. It's called X Wing POPO. Pew Pew. <laughs> contains all that, of that these. That sound uh, was sound the effects. sound of everyone getting sued simultaneously. <laughs> okay. Um,. Yeah, my ship combat stuff totally disappeared, so one moment. You can you can talk amongst yourselves for a sec if you want to do some role play. Now's a good time. Shit, shit, shit! <laughs> <laughs> Yelling from the laser turret, don't get us hit! <laughs> we also just got a nice $100 donation from Zach Khan, so thank Woo! you so much, Zach. Awesome. Thank you, Zach. 
Thank we'll you. Use that for the next extra life. <laughs> okay. For the extra extra life. That's right. Life. Read all about it. That's an extra 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 long time. <laughs> Matt, are you at your goal yet? Not yet. I'm at seven fifteen. Y'all should donate to Y Caliber and then Quill so he doesn't go to sleep ever again. <laughs> Speaking of sound effects, did you guys see that video with the uh, the beagle that makes noises exactly like a TIE fighter? No. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Let me sue this beagle. <laughs> I'll see if I can <laughs> dig it up once I... <laughs> I'll Google Beagle Typhon. Oh my goodness. So, Matt, am I able to like command the Y-Wing Squad? Uh, the Y-Wing Squad works as a system of boost die, uh, basically. So anytime we save one of those Y-Wings from getting blown up, we get another boost die to our next action. Okay. Someone's watching it. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> this, this fucking dog. Yeah, no, that's terrific. <laughs> Geraldine was euthanized the next day. <laughs> okay, so uh, the silhouette sets the difficulty. So because uh, they are the same size, basically, they're one, they're within one, that means the difficulty is average. So that's the same for you. Difficulty's average, uh, but they're going considerably faster, so they get uh, they get two boost die in attacking you. Now then, dice pool. This guy, the tie. This this is a tie interceptor pilot. He's he's kind of a badass. Uh, hold on a moment. I just got someone at the door. He gets an ejection seat. So Fun badass fact, that fighter. someone they showed up at the door. That's the people coming to sue, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't pull punches. Hi there. I have this court document for you. <laughs> <laughs> so you can pay a $2,000 fine right now, or we can go to court, and you can state your case. Here's your cease and desist, and have a lovely day. And this whole chips versus crisp argument. <laughs> it's gotten out of control. Yeah, we're, we're getting shut down by big crisps. We <laughs> here at Lucasfilm. <laughs> this has been the most exciting hour of uh, space combat thus far, <laughs> I tell you. Do any of you guys play the X Wing Miniatures game? No, but I've heard good things. I've heard yeah. good things too. Yeah. It is delightful. I just don't have um, not the patience. What am I? What's the, money? Money? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll be right back quick. About Start half chat. of my stuff is. Uh, I had a friend who bought a lot, and it had a bunch of duplicate stuff in it. So I got its third hand off of him. Oh, awesome! On the cheap. In the continuing scheme that is Fantasy Flight Games trying to take your money. Yeah, they Aww. play the game well. They, they don't do. have to try very hard. Okay. There's their attack. Uh, oh, no. so, so, so we're probably hit. Yeah, mm -hmm. you were definitely hit. In fact, you take extra damage, but um, all is not lost. Don't panic just yet. It's only one shot. Uh, so their damage on there is six, um, and they've had three successes, so that's nine damage. So you're going to need to first subtract your armor value from that damage. Three. Yeah, nine so, minus three is six. Yeah, and then you take six damage to hull trauma on your ship. Six points of hull trauma. Good. If we take three more shots like that, our ship is gone. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's the so, spirit. I, uh, <laughs> I do have a question, though. Yes. Uh, do we have shields on this thing? Uh, oh yeah, you do. That gives them a setback die. My bad. Let's roll one setback die. Let's hope it does something good. Let's hope it, it does nothing. Good. It does <laughs> nothing. <laughs> All right. Hey. Oh, somehow they've done more damage. <laughs> <laughs>
I tried, guys. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> we'll we'll All get right. there to punch him in no time. Excellent. Now, this other, uh, this other pilot is going to use a maneuver. Well, the, the first pilot used a maneuver to go one faster. This pilot is going to um, stay on target. <laughs> stay on target? Yep. So stay that upgrades. Here we go. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Uh, so that upgrades the skill pool of attacks made by the ship by one, and it upgrades all attacks made on the ship by one. So it makes it a little uh, more difficult to hit that one, I think. Or no, it makes it easier to hit that one. Okay, so we'll just upgrade that there, and let's see how that one does. Oh, so lucky. Hello? So you are not able to hit them. Uh, you blast at them. Or Sorry, they are not able to hit you. I'm I'm used to being on the player side here. Uh, <laughs> they're blasting away at you, and they're trying to stay on target. They're trying to get behind your ship, but they're just not able to do it. They can't pull it out. Is that the and they they swoop by, but are unable to land a hit on you as they do. <laughs> 